All right, welcome back to another edition of Breaking Points, The Intercept, where we talk about stories that The Intercept broke. Oftentimes, those are stories that Ken Klippenstein broke. So, Ken, thanks for joining me here again. Good to be with you. And thank you guys uh, for uh, indulging us in this and, and for being members of Breaking Points, which is what enables this kind of partnership to, to take hold. And so, Ken's story this week uh, is the result of a FOIA we can put it up here. It's called, the headline is, uh, Intel report warned Abraham Accords would fuel violence. So this is based on an intelligence report that you and Beth obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request. And for people who always hear that term kicked around, FOIA, Freedom of Information, tell, like, let's start actually there for one minute. Like, what is a FOIA? And like, how, how did you get into throwing out so many FOIAs? And how did, how did, how is it that you are the one that got this back rather than other members of the media? So Freedom of Information Act, that's a federal law by which you can essentially request any government document um, and have it disclosed to you. Now, there are a number of exemptions. Mm -hmm. you know, if there's national security information, if there's privacy information that they can black things out or redact them. Um, but the general idea is a good one, which is that, you know, taxpayers fund the government. And so they have a right to mm -hmm. see what they're up to and what it is that they're doing. And so it was with that act that I was able to file a request, get this intelligence report back from the Department of Homeland Security, and see that uh, Trump's- What's the timing here? Like, what's the request look like? How long does it take you to get it back? Well, I had to sue for this. You mentioned mm -hmm. Beth a moment ago, right. Gordon, my attorney. Uh, we went to federal court because when I put in the request for uh, this and other intelligence reports, they didn't produce them. Right. And uh, when you see a report like this, you can see why that is. Right. <laughs> it's just that uh, a lot of the intelligence reporting is embarrassing. And in this case, what the intelligence report found, uh, this was Trump's own intelligence agency, the Trump administration, because this was in 2020, saying that his signature diplomatic program for all of the Middle East was gonna increase the risk right. of terror attacks, not just in the region, but against Americans uh, in the United States. Right. So you go to court, you get this, you get this report that DHS had put together. And so what do they mean by, well, first of all, Abraham Accords will quickly define what that is. That's basically Jared Kushner's baby, where people said, look, how are you going to uh, resolve the Israeli-Palestinian uh, crisis that's been going on for 50 plus years? And Kushner said, well, I'm going to resolve it by ignoring the Palestinians. I'm just going to cut a deal that's a, basically a business deal. Uh, between Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, UAE, and Israel. Well, what about the Palestinians? Well, don't worry about the Palestinians. Yeah, we'll it's, such figure, a, yeah. it's such a cynical move because um, they were trying to pitch it. And, you know, the Washington press and, and a lot in the think tanks, they ran with this framing of it as a peace agreement. Right, peace. But the question peace is, between who? Well, right. why is there right. not peace to begin with? Because there are millions of displaced people without a state, and that creates conflict between the um, Arab nations and Israel. And I would say... That's probably a good reason for a conflict. Like, you know, it's not well, a good reason for, you know, not, not, terrorism, but it's like a good reason for there to be a disagreement right. and a need for Geopolitic, a solution. Geo, geopolitical conflict is going to be created by an illegal occupation that goes on for 50 plus years, right? Yeah. Whether, whether that becomes, we're not saying it ought to become violent, but it's right. going to create conflict between states. Right. And so he's kind of, right, exactly. So their solution, their great innovation was coming and say, hey, what if we just stick our head in the sands and pretend like this whole Palestine thing doesn't exist? Right. And we just paper over that, and then we can make this agreement, which, by the way, is very unpopular in the Arab world. Um, but the sort of cynical calculation on the part of um, the sort of Washington planners for this kind of thing is, well, the Arab world is largely run by dictators, right. so the public doesn't have a say, so we can just ram something like this through and not have to worry what ordinary Arabs think. Well, it turns out sometimes you do have to worry about that because there can be unrest. There can right. be, you know, it leads to other problems. But they just pretended like none of that existed. Right. And so what does the DHS find in this intelligence report? Um, so they found, this is interesting, so Department of Homeland Security, the word right. homeland being the operative term here, their right. concern is U.S. equities in uh, primarily the domestic United States. So for them to issue a report saying that there's a threat of increased terrorism as a consequence of this agreement, that's very interesting. This isn't the CIA, this isn't the Department of Defense. Right. Um, you know, to say that it, in, it leads to an increase in the likelihood of terrorism in the Middle East would be sort of obvious and, and you know, that's bad in itself but that there's a threat to U.S. equities in the domestic United States and, as the report notes, against U.S. Jews uh, because the idea is that um, there's going to be right. resentment towards Israel and people might respond to that. So a rise in anti-Semitic violence. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's real stakes here if you're an ordinary American and you don't particularly care what happens in the Middle East. You just care about what happens in the continental United States. Right. And, you know, I think that's why we had to sue for it because you disclose something like right. that, it's embarrassing. And the reality is a lot of these intelligence agencies – um, I think the rank and file tend to have more integrity, but the political leadership who are appointed by the White House, they know not to let things like this come out because it's going to embarrass their guy in, in the Oval Office. 
Yeah, and so Democrats in real time kind of poo-pooed this for the rational reasons that we're talking about right. here. You can't cut a peace deal between two parties by cutting out one of the parties. Right. Yet now Democrats are in power. And what is the Biden administration's posture now towards the quote unquote Abraham Accords? They're trying to do exactly the same thing that the Trump administration did. In fact, even worse, because they're trying to let Saudi Arabia into the normalization. If you look at the normalization deal that uh, President Trump and his administration pursued, it was primarily between Israel, Bahrain, and the UAE. Um, but when you add Saudi, you know, I was interviewing for this story, Trita Parsi, a very good um, expert at the Quincy Institute. He said Saudi Arabia was always the prize because it's, first of all, far bigger nation in terms of um, population. They have a much, much bigger oil reserve, so geopolitically they're more powerfully, they're more powerful. And crucially, they are the keeper of the most holy sites in Islam. And so the idea is that, you know, if they bury the hatchet with Israel, normalized relations, they can just totally forget about the Palestinian problem because this is the most powerful Arab state that's, that's saying, you know, things are fine, we're gonna right. reinstate when I say normalize, I mean reinstate diplomatic ties, formal diplomatic ties with the Israeli right. government. And to show that the Biden administration understands what the DHS was saying here, uh, fundamentally, there's been recent reporting that in, his, uh, in, his, in the lead up to his coming trip to Israel, which will also involve a, a trip to Riyadh as well, that the Biden administration has asked the Israelis, basically don't do anything crazy between yeah. now Right. and the time uh, that, that we meet, because it will be thoroughly embarrassing if you, say, break ground on brand new settlement projects, right. uh, if there's video of you demolishing Palestinian homes. Or if you, uh, shoot, a, or if you shoot a journalist who's very famous and respected in the country. Right, so th now the definition of crazy uh, is in the eye of the beholder, so it's not as if the, you know, all of the illegal activity is going to, to halt over, overnight, but what, what is it, you know, how does how does Biden's trip to the region fit into this? Uh, you know, fit into this expansion of the Abraham Accords. Well, first of all, he's pursuing it, and if you look at what the administration said, you know, after uh, so many liberals decried the Trump administration rightly for pursuing this, the Biden administration is trying to do a version of it on steroids and take credit for it, and uh, the jealousy is palpable uh, among some of the sort of uh, statecraft side of the Biden administration because the Biden administration has asked the media in the past not to use the term Abraham Accords. I think there's one way to read that, which is that we want to be able to name it uh -huh. for ourselves so that we can take credit for it. We're jealous of that Trump had this um, diplomatic achievement, if you want to call it that. Um, the, the Goliath Accords? What should, what, should it, <laughs> what should it be called? The Biden Accords. Yes, Biden. <laughs> the Democrat Accords. Um, and so w when you look at uh, some of these um, uh, uh, discussion around his, his visits to these, these things is supposed to be a blessing for this kind of an arrangement. Because if you look at, so here's what's interesting about it. Um, some, uh, something like uh, uh, reinstating diplomatic ties with Israel between uh, Saudi, where domestically, again, it's gonna be very unpopular, including among you know uh, r religious orders that have power within the country and could conceivably pose some sort of threat to Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince. The question is, well, what are the Saudis getting out of it, and that's what's really scary, because we are now seeing reporting in Axios and, and other outlets suggesting that in exchange for this, the Biden administration is willing to give them certain security guarantees by which mm -hmm. they can request U.S. military power, U.S. tax dollar um, backed uh, 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 equipment and uh, military support to come to their aid in whatever it is that they request. And so the U.S. is gonna be on the hook to basically remunerate them for this deal that is intensely unpopular in the Arab world. So in addition to the threat of terror attacks against the US, that's a whole nother factor um, that I think shows that there's gonna be a cost imposed on, on, on the US in exchange for this. And could it be the kind of cost that spirals into a regional conflict, like exactly. drags us into a bigger exactly. regional conflict? Exactly, so that's the problem. When you give a security agreement, that's not something that exists in a vacuum where suddenly, oh, you know, we're gonna keep behaving the same way. Put yourself in the shoes of one of these uh, Gulf states like Saudi Arabia. You have the backing of the biggest, toughest, most powerful right. military. So now you world. get a little rougher. How are you gonna behave? Probably you're gonna care a little bit less about being risk averse and, and uh, hmm. cautious and, and, and worrying about responses because you've got Fam that- Famously big... incautious MBS to begin with. <laughs> yeah. exactly. exactly. And when you talk to people in the diplomatic community, that's the impression. A lot of them initially were like, this isn't going to happen. It's too crazy because it's too risky for Saudi Arabia. And as um, Biden makes it clear that he's pushing this and, and MBS sends signals that he's open to it, there there, there has been, um, it, you know, when I, in, in, in my talks with these guys, they're like, oh my God, we might have been wrong. MBS is so young and so green, he might actually do this now. And I think that there's a shift in terms of thinking what, what might actually happen. And there was this in 
incredible uh, German military intelligence assessment of MBS that leaked maybe 2015 or something when he was just yep. deputy defense minister that said this guy is wildly rash. He's He has impulse control issues. Like this is someone to be very nervous about. He has showed impulse his impulse control issues now on the global stage of you know b- blockading Qatar, killing Jamal Khashoggi, uh, rounding up a whole dozens of people and torturing them in the Ritz Carlton, like right. just stuff, including stuff family members, like, including right. family members, stuff that is just outside the norms of even a, 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 like a the normal barbaric yeah. <laughs> totalitarian ruler, uh, and it seems like it's working for him. Oh yeah. So if you're one of these risk takers like MBS and you keep taking these risks and you keep having people tell you, this is too risky, don't do this, it's not gonna work out for you. And over time it continues to work out for you. You can only imagine uh, what kind of risks he wants to take next. And we haven't even gotten to you know their, their pursuit of uh, nuclear technology. Uh, but that, that'll be maybe for, for another time. Uh, we got another a pleasant segment. Yeah, yeah another pleasant segment <laughs> <laughs> on the end of the world. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there for now. Ken, as always, it's a, it's a pleasure doing these uh, Breaking Points segments with you, and thank you guys uh, for watching. Uh, if you have if you have anything that Ken should be reporting on, if you have anything I should be reporting on, my DMs are open. If you have anything for Ken, what's your what's your signal? 202-510-1268. All right, reach out, reach out to Ken. Always there for you. Always here for you. All right. See you soon. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.